David Sirota drops by to tell us about the real agenda of the U.S. Supreme Court. Check it out, leave your comments, ding the bell, share it with your friends, and subscribe to our channel. I often reference uh, David Sirota's newsletter, uh, Too Much Information, TMI, uh, that you can find over at his website. Uh, I believe it's davidsirota.com. Um, uh, or sirota.substack.com. We'll, we'll verify that in just a second. Um, but this morning he had an absolutely brilliant piece about the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has been getting all this publicity. Oh, look at this. They saved DACA. Well, actually they didn't. Um, and it's, and oh, look at this. They saved, uh, trans, you know, rights. Well, sort of, um, but really what they're up to is getting almost no publicity. And I thought that this was really something worth talking about. So on the line with us is David Sirota, the journalist, the, he uh, was previously a senior advisor and speechwriter for Bernie Sanders. At one time he was one of my colleagues in progressive talk radio, known David for many, many years. Uh, one of the really good guys out there. You can tweet him at David Sirota, S I R O T A. David, welcome back. And, uh, first of all, what website is it best for people to go to, to find your newsletter? They can go to my website, davidsirota.com. Okay, cool. So uh, your piece today was titled, The Supreme Court is a Corporate Star Chamber. Uh, you might want to remind us what the Star Chamber was and then uh, uh, fill us in. Yeah, the Star Chamber is like a colloquial term, I guess, or a historical term of a, a panel of, of judges that uh, basically meets out justice uh, in, in secret. Uh, and, you know, essentially the Supreme Court... It's not exactly in secret, but it, it is it is defending corporations and billionaires in an, an historically unprecedented way. And, and I think that I, I say it's in quasi secret because it gets very little attention, as you alluded to. I mean, there's a lot of focus on social issues at the Supreme Court. You know, there were rulings last week about anti-discrimination and the DACA program, you know, good, good rulings that 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 progressives uh, cheered. But at the same time. It rather ignored were decisions that exemplified how the court is constantly uh, strengthening and fortifying the power of corporations and billionaires. Last week, in the, in the last 10 days alone, you've had a decision to limit the SEC's ability to uh, punish financial criminals. Uh, you had a pension ruling uh, in which the basically the court made it easier for financial firms to, uh, to, to steal workers' pension retirement money. Uh, and then you had a ruling uh, that essentially strengthened energy companies' power to steamroll environmental objections to fossil fuel projects. So that's, that's and, and I want to be clear, that's not just, that's not an anomaly. And that, that's the key point here. That the court. And that's just one week. Really, that's one, right, exactly. The court is. By looking at a, a series of records, you can tell that the court is the most pro-corporate court in modern history. And the best way to see that is to look at the amicus briefs filed by the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which is the, basically the representative for big business in Washington. And you can see how many times the court is agreeing with the amicus briefs filed by the chamber. And if you look at it that way, you see that the court is the most pro Chamber of Commerce, a.k.a. most pro-corporate, in the modern history of, this, of, of the Supreme Court. Right. And, and by amicus briefs, for people who don't know what we're talking about, when uh, two parties go before the Supreme Court and presumably opposite sides of a, of a decision or of an argument, um, both sides have the ability to have friends of theirs basically file friend of the court briefs, amicus, you know, friend, uh, you know, friend of the court briefs that make the argument for one side or the other. And the, and the, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce is constantly filing these briefs, even on cases that they didn't bring or they have nothing to do with, to strengthen the arguments that typically in a Republican administration, the Solicitor General is making, the, the administration is making in a Democratic administration, you know, some right wing member of Congress or some corporation may be making and uh, spot on. I, you know, I, I wrote a book about this. It was published uh, uh, last year, uh, the, the Hidden History of the Supreme Court and the Betrayal of America. This goes all the way back to the founding of our republic, although in large you know, in really, really large form, it has it has been since the 1950s that the Supreme Court has been basically a tool of corporate America and and almost singularly responsible for the destruction of, for example, unions in the United States. David, what, in your opinion, um, can or should Americans 
uh, do about this, assuming that they that they understand the problem that you know that we've had, you know that basically the, the Supreme Court, with a, with a few notable exceptions, has been a, a right wing institution since the founding. Well, I think there's there's two things to, 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 that we can do. One, when nomination fights happen, uh, these nominees and, and and the senators asking them questions have to be pushed to focus in on their corporate record. I noted in the piece that that, hap- that happens almost it almost never happens. It happened one time that I can remember in recent years when when Neil Gorsuch uh, he had sided with um, a, a company essentially that fired its worker for trying to not freeze to death in the middle of winter. If that that came into the national consciousness for about one second, which was which was an anomaly. It usually doesn't come into those issues. Don't come into nomination fights. Gorsuch was confirmed anyway. So so that's the first thing. When, when a Supreme Court nominee comes up, pushing your senator to actually use the opportunity to question and spotlight uh, th- that nominee's record. The second thing that can be done is similarly as it relates to Congress is what, y- your senators are voting on judges all the time. C- confirmation of lower court judges, many of whom often become Supreme Court justices and who are setting precedent at the, at the lower judicial level. And and Democratic senators are often voting for Republican uh, judicial nominees, and and the Republican project to to pack the the courts with right wing corporate ideologues has been a long running campaign, and Democrats have often gone uh, gone along with it. And that needs to be like when people are talking to their senators or when they see primaries, so you know Senate primaries in those in those discussions and debates, how much those senators are voting for you know Trump judicial nominees needs to be a much bigger issue. Yeah. Amen. David, we've got about two minutes until we're going to hit a break here. And uh, you know, as you know, I subscribe to your newsletter. I get it every day, the, uh, the TMI newsletter. Uh, we're talking with David Sirota, davidsirota.com. Uh, what, what are some of the other issues, since you're producing a, you know, a daily or virtually daily newsletter here, you, you cover a lot of territory. Um, what are the areas that you want to flag for our listeners? I want people to pay attention to uh, right now to Wall Street's stealth takeover of the federal government. And I know we know that's been going on for a long time, but in the last couple of weeks, the private equity industry, which is an industry that charges high fees, uh, does not deliver great returns for investors, funds Donald Trump and the Republican Party in, in many cases, they have gotten access to workers' 401k plans. Uh, they have uh, they have gotten their guy in at the SEC. The SEC guy, Jay Clayton, is now being nominated for the, the Southern District of New York U.S. Attorney, which is the top cop on Wall Street. You had the uh, the gutting of the Volcker Rule uh, yesterday, which allows banks now to funnel even more money into private equity. Private equity is eating our economy alive. It is taking over our 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 government. And, and, and I think the American public isn't well aware of what this industry is. It, it, it got a little bit of an awareness when Mitt Romney ran for president and Bar- Barack Obama spotlighted his, his, his work in private equity. But people need to, to really get their head around what is happening with this particular industry that is taking over corporations, uh, squeezing small businesses, laying off workers, all sorts of environmental degradation. And I don't think the public really understands uh, how important this shift in our economy is. And I've been covering it a lot uh, in the newsletter. Yeah, I, it's so bizarre that they can take over a company, force the company to borrow a billion dollars, then force the company to pay that back, and then the and then they own the company. I mean, it's just, it's insane. David Sirota, TMI uh, is the newsletter. Check, out, check it out at davidsirota.com. David, thanks for dropping by. Great talking with you.